welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. He also gets coolest uniform prize. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Wow, this is, uh, this is incredible. Thanks, Kate. I appreciate that. So um, I am really, really excited to be here. And I have been looking forward to this ever since Kate told me about One Young World last year at the, in Vienna at the Global Social Business Summit. And um, I am so incredibly excited about being here today because I truly believe that your generation has our future in your hands. And, and the reason why I believe that is because your generation is the first generation to be born in a world where we have all the tools necessary to solve the problems that we all face. And you were also born into a world where we have unprecedented capability to collaborate on a global scale, an unprecedented way for us to all work together towards our common goals. And I believe that there's a vast majority of the people in the world who want to make a difference, who want to make the world a better place. I believe that there's a vast majority of the people in the world who feel a responsibility to leave this world a little bit better than they found it. So if that's true, then why are there so many problems? And answering that question and exploring that question is, is the focus of, I, of what I want this uh, discussion to be. Um, through that and, and as a tool in, in exploring that, I want to pan back. I want to pan, you know, Professor Muhammad Yunus talks about having the, uh, the worm's eye view, but we're going to pan back not to the eagle eye view, but we're going to pan back even farther. And we're going to pan back to the orbital perspective. And I've, I've had the opportunity to have some absolutely amazing experiences that have given me a really incredible perspective of the planet that we all live on. Uh, in 2006, I had the privilege of living on the bottom of the ocean in Aquarius, the world's only undersea laboratory, uh, for three weeks. And in 2008, I launched on the US Space Shuttle Discovery to the International Space Station, where we had a two-week uh, construction mission. And uh, last year, in 2011, I took this picture from, the, from um, the International Space Station, which shows Somalia and Ethiopia and um, Yemen. So I spent half of last year living and working on board the International Space Station after launching from Kazakhstan on a Russian rocket with, uh, you can see my two Russian colleagues there, and um, we launched pretty close to the 50th anniversary of the first human spaceflight from the very same launch pad that Yuri Gagarin launched from on that historic day. So back to the orbital perspective. I want to give you this, this this feeling that we have, this, this perspective that we have when we look at our planet from space, but rather than um, try and just explain it to you, I want to show it to you. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures, I'm going to show you some videos, and what I want you to understand when you see this is that these are real. These are, this is not CGI, this is not computer generated imagery, this is really uh, what it looks like. Um, and to set the stage, about a month before I returned to Earth, I, I flew to the cupola on the International Space Station. Now the cupola is this windowed observatory on the bottom of the station w which looks down at the Earth and I flew there because that's how we get around in space. We just fly from one place to the other. And so this is a picture of me in the cupola. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to take some pictures for a time-lapse video project that we were working on. And so as I was taking the pictures, one of the practice shots really caught my eye. In this picture is a long illuminated line snaking across a large landmass for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers, and you can see that in this picture here. And so I really didn't know what, the, what this was. You know, I initially thought it was a strange exposure of moonlight on a river, but it turns out that this is not a natural reflection at all. It, it turns out what this really is, is man-made. Now, I've always been one of these astronauts that have said you can't see any borders from space. Apparently, I'm wrong, because what this actually is, is the man-made illuminated border between India and Pakistan. And seeing this from space had a huge impact on me. For the 50 years that we've been flying in space, astronauts and cosmonauts have commented on how beautiful, how fragile, how, how breathtaking our planet is from space, how peaceful it is, how tranquil. And these are not cliches that astronauts say because it feels good, it truly is moving to look at our planet from space. The point is not that we could look down and see a man-made border between India and Pakistan. The point is 
that we could look down at that same area and feel empathy for the struggles that all people face. We could look down from our orbital perspective and realize that each and every one of us is riding through the universe together on this spaceship that we call Earth, that we're all interconnected, that we're all in this together, and that we're all family. And that's what we call the orbital perspective. And when we look at our planet from space, we are filled with a sobering contradiction. On the one hand, we can clearly see the beauty of the planet that we've been given. On the other hand is the unfortunate realities of life on our beautiful planet for a significant portion of its inhabitants. Those that don't have clean water to drink, enough food to eat, the poverty, the conflict that exists on our planet. I launched into space with a belief that we have all the technology, we have all the resources necessary to solve the problems that we all face. Yet nearly a billion people don't have access to clean water, countless go to bed hungry every night, and many, many people die from completely curable and preventable diseases. This video shows the world that we live in. It is a world where the possibilities are only limited by our imagination and our will to act. It is within our capabilities to eliminate the suffering and the poverty that exists on our planet. So we have to ask ourselves, if we have the capability to solve all the problems that we face, why do so many critical problems still remain? So I spent, you know, the six months that I spent in space, a good deal of the free time that I had, I spent with my face plastered to a window looking at our Earth and pondering that question. And I believe one of the primary reasons why we still face so many critical problems despite our ample technology, despite our ample resources, lies primarily in our inability to collaborate on a global scale. What you're seeing in this video is the global scale. It is a scale where man-made and natural boundaries shrink. It is a scale where individuals and organizations and governments set aside their differences and work together towards our common goals. We now have the technology to enable global collaboration that is consistent and world-changing. The challenge is demonstrating just how beneficial, how vital, how valuable collaboration truly is. The good news is there's about 20 million organizations around the world that are working to improve life on Earth where people can lend a hand. The bad news is, for the most part, these organizations are not engaged in a universal coordinated effort. There's a great deal of duplication of effort, loss of efficiency, and unfortunately, in many cases, unhealthy competition. So I want to bring out a couple of points um, in making the world a better place. And the first one should be pretty obvious. We don't have to be in orbit to have this view that we're all interconnected and that we all need each other. So I think I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. And ideas are highly overrated. So what, what do I mean by that? Every great achievement starts with a great idea. But an idea without action is empty. And every great achievement comes with it a great deal of hard work and dedication. So just do it. So we, we are faced with immense problems, immense challenges on our planet. And when we are faced with seemingly insurmountable challenges, it is it's quite natural to be, feel overwhelmed, to be frustrated, to doubt that you can make a difference. The problems are so big, what could I possibly do to make a difference? They ask yourselves, is it even worth my effort? Even those people who have made a commitment to make a positive change, even those people will eventually experience periods of frustration, periods of, of disappointment, periods where they feel that, that they, they're not gonna make a difference. But it's precisely those people who have committed to make a positive change, and it's precisely at those moments when they feel like they're not gonna be successful, when they feel like it's not worth the effort, when they feel discouraged. Those people who persevere through those obstacles and step outside their comfort zone are the people who achieve their objectives, who achieve their dreams, and who affect real change in the world. I don't wanna be one of these people in the, in the twilight of my life that looks back and says, I wonder what would have happened if I really tried to make a difference. I wonder what would have happened, what would the world look like right now if I really gave everything I had to, to making the world a better place. Nothing is impossible. 
And I think we're, go we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But every truly great accomplishment at first not only seemed impossible, seemed, seemed a little bit crazy. Um, the first step to being able to affect real change in this world is to believe that real change is possible. And I just want to share with you a couple of things that I believe. I believe that it's possible to live in a world without poverty. I believe it's possible to live in a world where everybody has access to clean water and nobody goes to bed hungry every night. I believe that it's possible to live in a world where nobody dies from preventable, curable diseases. I believe it's possible to live in a world that educates all of its children. And I believe that we do live in a world where the possibilities are only limited by our imagination and our will to act. So what's the key? <laughs> Thank you. What's the key? The key is we. We are all interconnected, and the only way that we're going to solve this is together. And to, to illustrate that, I, I want to share a story with you. Uh, on one of my spacewalks that, that I had the opportunity to do, I clamped my feet on the end of the, the very long space station's robotic arm. And with me on the end of this arm, it was swept across a maneuver we called the windshield wiper maneuver, which took me across a big arc, across the top of the space station, and back. And at the top of this arc, I was 30 meters above the space station, looking down at this incredible accomplishment of humanity against the backdrop of our indescribably beautiful Earth 400 kilometers below that. And it really hit me just how 15 nations came together over the course of two decades of planning and design and construction to build this amazing research facility in space. Some of these pieces had not even fit together until it got to space. And it dawned on me that you know, if we can do that, if these nations can join together, some of which have not always been the best of friends, can join together and build this incredible orbiting research facility in space, imagine what we could do by working together on the ground, solving the problems that, that we all face. And so the key challenge, as I said, is demonstrating just how valuable and vital true collaboration is. So by clearly demonstrating how, how vital open, transparent collaboration is, we will show that it's in everybody's best interest. Open, transparent collaboration will be an engine that will fuel tremendous economic growth. And those individuals and organizations and governments that are engaged in unhealthy competition, secretive dealings, corruption, will see themselves being left behind. Corruption will be made obsolete. And they will have to take on a much more collaborative, they will have to evolve, they have to adapt, and take on a much more collaborative and, and, and co cooperative mindset in order to keep up with the economic growth that true open collaboration will bring. Open, transparent collaboration leads to better solutions. Through the pooling of resources and information, working together multiplies, multiplies uh, efficiencies, it reduces duplication of effort. It's the only true way to have economies and solutions of scale, and perhaps most importantly, Open, transparent collaboration leads to a better accountability, which fosters trust. So I returned to Earth after my six months uh, with, a, with a call to action, uh, which I took as a call to action, and I want to share that with you. It was time to say goodbye to our friends and to our home on the International Space Station. We were very eager to return to Earth, but we 